Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to see three different ways that we can use to handle our exceptions globally in the ASP.NET Core application. I will show you how to use the built-in exception middleware, the custom created middleware, and finally, we will use a new .NET 8 interface called iExceptionHandler. I also show you how to customize error responses that you can send back to your clients. So stick with me until the end of this one to see all this in practice. We have prepared our .NET API application using the latest framework. You can see two projects, the main one and the logger service. It is always good practice to have a logger service implemented so you can log your errors for later inspection. We use the nlog library for this. In the main project, you can see the data manager class, which is a simple data storage class that returns a list of students. You can also see the student model class and a prepared students controller with a single action that logs some info messages and returns a list of students. So, nothing too special here, but we have everything prepared to handle our exceptions. As you can see, this controller is pretty clean without the try catch blocks. We will keep it that way by handling all the exceptions globally. If we employed, for example, the onion architecture here, we wouldn't even have the logging logic here. It would be moved inside the service layer. But for this video, we can leave it as is. Of course, if you want to learn more about the onion architecture, you can watch our video on that topic. You will find the link in the description below. Now, let's start with our implementation. First, we're going to add a new class in the models folder. And let's name it error details. We're going to use this class for details of our error message. And we need, of course, two properties here the integer status code and the string message. Also, let's override the toString method by simply calling the JSON serializer dot serialize method and provide this as an argument. With this line, we simply want to serialize our model into a JSON string when we apply it to our response. To continue, let's create a new folder, name it extensions, and now inside this folder, we can create a new class and name it exception middleware extensions. Since it is an extension class, we'll make it static. Now we need to modify it. Inside the class, let's create a new public static void method and name it configure exception handler. Since this is an extension method, we're going to extend the web application class with the app parameter and also we'll provide our logger as the next one. Now, let's use the app parameter to call the use exception handler method. With this method, we add an exception handling middleware to the application's pipeline. This method accepts a single action I application builder delegate as a parameter. So, let's provide it and name it the app error. With the help of the app error parameter, we can call the run method that accepts a single request delegate parameter. So, we need to provide it as well with the help of context. Now, inside this request delegate, we can prepare our response and send it to the client. To do that, let's start by using the context.response.statusCode property and assign it the value of the HTTP status code dot internal server error property. We also have to cast this to an int. Also, let's use the same response property and populate the content type with application JSON. Now, to get the error from the original request, we create a context feature and use the context.features property and call the get method 
by providing the iException handler feature parameter. When we get this error, we can check if it is not null. And if the check passes, let's use the logger to log an error stating that something went wrong and print the error message. Lastly, to create a response, we need to await the context.response.write async method and provide our error details model class as an argument, where the status code is set to the context.response.status code and the message is set to internal server error. Of course, we will convert this to string. For now, we will have this generic message, but later on in the video, I will show you how to handle that. Now, let's go back to our controller and simply throw a new exception with the message exception while fetching students from the storage. With this, we simply simulate that an exception happened in our code. And there you go. We can now reuse this functionality to write more readable actions in the future. Now, to connect all the dots, we need to register this handler inside the program class. Since we are using a built-in middleware, we can't simply inject the logger service. So here, let's first extract it by calling the app.services.getRequiredService method and provide the iLoggerManager interface as a parameter. With this, we get our logger and now we can call our configure exception handler extension method and pass the logger as an argument. So, let's test this by starting our app and let's send a prepared request. We can see the proper response and the status code. And also, we can check the log messages and verify the error log in the file. Now, let's see how to use a custom middleware for global exception handling. To start, let's create a new folder, name it custom exception middleware, and then let's create a new class and name it exception middleware. Let's start by adding two read-only fields. The first one will be request delegate and name it next. And the second one is our logger service and let's name it logger. Now we need a constructor. Let's add both parameters here for the request delegate and iLogger manager. And of course, let's initialize our fields in the constructor's body. For the app to be able to execute this middleware, we need the invoke async method. So let's add a public async task method, name it invoke async, and provide an HTTP context parameter. Inside this method, we'll create a new try catch block. In the try part, we simply await the execution of the next delegate by providing the context argument. For the catch part, let's add the X here. And now we'll use our logger to log an error stating that something went wrong and providing our exception. Also, we'll await the handle exception async method where we provide the HTTP context and our exception as arguments. Of course, we need to create this method. So, let's generate it and add the async keyword here. Now, all we have to do is navigate to the previous exception class, copy these two context.response lines and 
paste them into our new method. And we need to modify these names. Also, we can go back one more time, copy the right async part and paste it into the new method. Just let's modify these two. And the message by adding the from the custom middleware part. So, to explain this code a little more, the next parameter of request delegate type is a function delegate that can process our HTTP requests. After the registration process, we create the invoke async method. Request delegate can process requests without it. If everything goes well, the next delegate should process the request and the get action from our controller should generate a successful response. But if a request is unsuccessful, and it is because we are forcing an exception, our middleware will trigger the catch block and call the handle exception async method. In that method, we just set up the response status code, the content type, and we return a response. Now, let's navigate to our exception middleware extensions class and add another static method. Let's name it configure custom exception middleware and extend the web application class with the app parameter. Inside the method, we will use the app parameter and call the use middleware method to add our exception middleware class to the pipeline execution. Finally, let's use this method in the program class. We have to comment out these two lines and call the app.configure custom exception middleware method. Now, let's start the app, send the request, and inspect the result again. As you can see, our custom middleware is implemented in a couple of steps. Now, let's talk about customizing our error messages. If you want, you can always customize your error messages from the error handler. There are different ways of doing that, but I'm going to show you one way to do it. First of all, let's assume that the access violation exception is thrown from our action. So let's modify our code to throw an access violation exception and modify the message. Now, Let's modify the handle exception async method inside the exception middleware class. Here, let's add the message variable and then use a switch expression pattern matching to check the type of our exception and assign the right message to the message variable. To do that, let's check if it is an access violation exception. And if it is, we provide an access violation exception from the custom middleware message. In any other way, we will say internal server error from the custom middleware. Also, we have to modify the response part. And inside of the hard code message string, just provide the message variable. Now, when we run our app and send the request one more time, we see the access violation message. Uh, there's one thing to mention here. We are using the 500 status code for all the responses from the exception middleware. And that's something we believe should be done. After all, we are handling exceptions and these exceptions should be marked with the 500 status code. But this doesn't have to be the case all the time. For example, if you have a service layer and you want to propagate responses from the service method as custom exceptions and catch them inside the global exception handler, you may want to choose a more appropriate status code for the responses. You can watch about this technique in the Onion Architecture video, which you can find in the description below. Now, let's see the iException handler interface in action. iException handler is an interface that we can use to handle exceptions in ASP.NET Core applications. 
It allows us to write custom logic for handling individual exceptions or groups of exceptions based on their type, in turn providing tailor responses, error messages as well as logging. To start, let's create a new class inside the custom middleware folder and name it global exception. We need to inherit from the iException handler interface. And let's implement the interface. And of course, we need to make this method async. As you can see, this interface has a single method member named tryHandleAsync. With this method, we try to handle the specified exception asynchronously within the ASP.NET Core pipeline. It also means we can use our existing error handling logic inside this method and everything should work as before. That said, let's add a new private read-only iLoggerManager field named logger and let's generate a constructor that initializes this field. Now we can simply paste a handling logic here. We paste this logic as it is the same one we used in our previous cases with one difference. This one must return true or false. If we return true, as we did in this case, we state that the execution in the pipeline is over. Now all we have to do is to navigate to the program class, register this handler as a service by using the builder services and calling the add exception handler method, where we provide the name of our handler class, in this case global exception. Now let's comment this and call the use exception handler with default options to add our iException handler implementation to the pipeline. And that's all it takes. Now, just before we test this, when I think a bit more, this class should be named global exception handler. So let's navigate to the class and rename it. This will also rename the class in the registration line. Now, let's start the app and send the request one last time. And there you go, you can see a response from the iException handler service. Excellent! With this, we will finish the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit that like button if you like the video. You can also use the bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best!